pounds of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon two of his servants and they bear them before him. Right, so he got not only one talent of silver but two talents of silver and two garments. Go ahead. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and, be, and he stole. bestowed them in the house. And he let the men go, and they departed. Go ahead. But he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? He said, Where you coming from, Gehazi? He just sent his two servants away. He said, Where you coming from, Gehazi? Go ahead. And he said, Thy servant went no hither. So I didn't go nowhere. Go ahead. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee? He said, Didn't my heart go with you? Did my mind go with you? Did I understand and feel in the spirit where you went, Read. When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and manservants and maidservants? This is what he gave him. The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. Hear that? Read that again. The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. So this is what you're looking at. You see? The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, cleaving unto Gehazi, and unto his seed. How long? Forever. Forever. You see? Read. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. So he went out from his presence a leper at that moment as white. They like to call themselves white. As white as snow. So he, that's what I'm saying. So you have... These that are, you know, are the seed of Gehazi too. They're gonna be red. <laughs> How long it say? Forever. Forever. It's very important that we see this. Um, Second Chronicles eight. And 13. That's why I say all so called white people are necess not necessarily Edomites. Some could be the seed of Gehazi. Mm -hmm. This wicked sucker. Same kind of spirit, though. <laughs> Go ahead. Second Chronicles chapter 8, verse 13. We'll start at 12. 8 and 12. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings unto the Mosai on the altar of the Mosai which he had built before the porch, even after a certain rate every day, offering according to the commandment of Moses on the Sabbath and on the new moon. See, he honored this, we honored this, even at, after a certain rate every day, offering according to the commandment of Moses, the law, on the Sabbath and on the new moons, plural. That's every first day of the month, every 30 days, there's a new moon. The Sabbath is sundown, the sundown, the seventh day. <coughs> B. And on the summer feast, three times in the year, even in a feast of unleavened bread, and in a feast of weeks, and in a feast of tabernacles. Right. So, just showing you that, uh, This is how we follow the law of Moses. Ezra's third chapter. Ezra's three. And Verse 5. Ezra 3 and 5. Ezra chapter 
verse 5. Verse 5. And afterward offered the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons and of all the set feasts of the Most High that were consecrated, and of every one that willingly offered a free will offering unto the Most High. Right. So you're looking at how over and over again, this is what we've done. This is the law that was set up when we was in captivity, when we was in Egypt. But we wasn't in captivity all the time that we was in Egypt. We ruled from the 14th to the 18th dynasty, and then Ramsey II put us in captivity the last 80 years. But we understood, we understood like he said, it started with Joseph, because Joseph was right under Pharaoh. Then when Pharaoh, Ramsey I died, then Joseph took over. Um, Nehemiah 10. Nehemiah 10 and no. Nehemiah 10, reverse. Start at verse uh, 31. And 31? Yeah, Nehemiah 10 and 31. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31. And if the people of the land bring war, bring wear, or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. See? It's part of our law. This is what we did. We followed the laws of the Most High. And if these other nations came, like they do, even to this day, they want to sell everything, when on the Sabbath day and the holy days, we didn't buy and sell them on the Sabbath days or the holy days. That's what I say, if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it or all of them on the Sabbath day, read. Or on the holy day. Or on the holy day. Read. And that we would leave the seventh year and the ex, ex, exaction of every death. Right. That's the seventh year. We call it the Jubilee. You know what I mean? Where just like even Esau trying, you know, perpetrate somewhat as such, you know, like you have some on your credit, it's supposed to go off for every seven years. Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't make sure it go off, see if it go off. Well, he claimed that, right? <laughs> but go ahead. Also, we made ordinances for us to charge ourselves yearly in the third part of a shekel for the service of the house of the Most High. So, of our power. when you see, it says, we also made orders for us to charge ourselves yearly with the third part of a shekel for the service of the house of the Most High. It costs money to take care of the house of the Most High. It costs, you know, it's not just free. Go ahead. For the showbread, and for the continual meat offering, and for the continual burnt offering of the Sabbaths, of the new moons, for the set feast, and for the holy things, and for the sin offerings, to make an atonement for Israel, and for all the work of the house of our power. See, for this took money. This took, it had to have the means to be able to take care of the things that was necessary to keep everything moving in the school, in the church. And for the offerings that they were offering. And for the business that the church was doing. You know what I mean? The things that just necessarily had to be done. So, It just shows you, uh, get Isaiah 66. Let's go to the kingdom. Why the most high about so much I got to So I restart at verse 22. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22. 
For as the new heaven, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which this I will make, shall remain before me, see, the, a new heaven and a new earth that he's gonna make, like he made this heaven in the sky and a new earth. He's gonna make a new heaven and a new earth, new heavens and new earth. And our heaven gonna be on this earth. <laughs> Go ahead. Which I will make, shall remain before me. He's gonna remain before the Most High in the Mashiach Go ahead. Said the Most High, so shall your seed and your name remain. So shall, shall our lineage and our name remain. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another. The first thing the Most High is saying, after he done created new heavens and a new earth. Then he come back and tell us from one, if it's not important, why would he say it's going to come to pass that from one new moon, that's the first day of the month, to another first day of the month, new moon feast, read. And from one Sabbath to another. And the seventh day, Sabbath, to another, read. Shall all flesh come to worship before me, said the Most High. So, that's clear to me. On the new moon, the first day of the month, and on the Sabbath, the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the month, from evening to evening, shall all flesh come to worship before the Most High. Read. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. And they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. That's right, man. So we're going to go forth and look upon the carcasses, it's the dead bodies of the men that have transgressed against the Most High. For their worms shall not die and their fires shall not be quenched. And it's going to be a hating for us. That's why we got to work hard, you know, to fulfill our plight and try to make it there. That's why I get up uh, 2nd Ezra 9 and 13. This is what we got to concentrate more on. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 13. And therefore be thou not curious how the unrighteous shall be punished, and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, who the world is, and for whom the world is created. That's right, man. So we got to be looking at how we can be worthy to make it to this new heavens and this new earth. That's what it's all about. That's why Masha Kavashai told uh, the 12 apostles, get Matthew 10, 5 and 6. We gotta concentrate on how we're gonna be saved, how we're gonna be redeemed out of this madness. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. These twelve Hamasai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentile, and into any of the city, and into any city of the Samaritans, into ye not. So he said, Don't go to the Gentiles, don't go to northern Israel, where's that's Samaria. Go ahead. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Say, so go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Read. As ye go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's very important. That we teach the kingdom of heaven. That people know that it's something better than this. But we ain't talking about how they taught us in slavery. Just serve master, do whatever you could do in this world and don't follow the most high and you got something promised to you better, no. We gotta work toward the kingdom that is prepared for us. It's a, 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 get uh, John 14 and one, it's a kingdom that's prepared for us. That we gotta work toward receiving. Read. St. John chapter 14 verse one. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in the Most High, believe also in me. 
In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He, he said he's going to prepare a place for us. Me? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye be, you, there ye may be also. That's right, he says he's going to prepare a place for us. He said, I will come again and receive us unto himself. And where he is, we're going to be able to be there also. Look at uh, Acts 1 and 11. This is what the two angels said as they seen, as they all seen a Mashiach Yavashai ascending into a cloud. This is what they said to him. Read that. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? See, why are you standing there gazing up into the sky? Read. This same a Mashiach Yavashai which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. That's right. So he's going to come in like manner as you see seeing him go up into heaven. See, that's how he's coming back. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, Revelation 1 and 7. chariots of the most high and everybody going to see him. You ain't got to worry about it. he's over here, he's over there. People saying they're the only ones that have him. No. He say everybody going to see him. Read. And all kings of the earth shall well because of him. He said, all kindreds of the earth are going well because of a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. That's right. B. Even so, so be it. So be it. That's right. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, which is, which is, which was and which is to come, the Almighty. There it is. So that's what we're looking forward to. We just got to work toward fulfilling what the Most High told us in Deuteronomy 28 and 1 and 2. Read that. It don't change. It's supposed to just get better as you, you know, work toward what's right and don't let nobody take you off your path. Because you can you look how many men have been doing this so many years and they just go off. They have just went off and they just they went off let some something take them off their path. Read this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the most high thy power to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Most High thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So that's what he said. So when you understand those following commandments, it's going to lead to everlasting life. We're going to be able to enjoy this, this place that Amashiach Yavashai has prepared for us. Plenteousness. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Go ahead. We just got to do the commandments. Go ahead. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. All these blessings going to come upon us and overtake us, man. Be If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the most high thy power. That's a condition. If we follow the commandments. 
Because everybody, most people in the world now, they don't want to follow, they don't want to do what the most I say. And they'll try and take you off of your path to follow them to hell with them. Really, seriously, you have to think about it. I was like, man, that right there says it all. If you, if you observe to do all his commandments, which he commanded this day, the most high thy power going to set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, if Daniel 7, 18 says, the saints shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom, how long? Forever. Then how are we going to do this if we don't follow the most high? His rules and regulations. Like they tell you to follow the rules and regulations of the land. Got to follow the law of the land. So... This was promised to us, man. Let's end with this. Go to 2nd Ezra 8, one of my favorites. Um, start at verse 48. 2nd Ezra chapter 8, verse 48. Now start at verse 47. 47. But thou comest, 2nd Ezra chapter 8, verse 47. But thou comest far short that thou shouldest be able to love my creature. More than I. He said, hey, you come real short, man, Ezra, <laughs> trying to love my creature, Israel, more than me. Remember, the most I said, Jacob have I loved, right? So you think you love him more than me? Go ahead. But I have all time drawn nigh unto thee and unto it. He said, I have drawn nigh, I have drawn near unto Ezra and to Israel. Read. And unto it, but never to the un unrighteous. So you see, he calls it it, he calls a creature and an it. <laughs> right? That's the 12 tribes of Israel. But he ain't never, so he ain't never drawn near to the unrighteous. So who they rolling with? Satan? That's right. Go ahead. In this also thou art marvelous before the Most High. Say, so in this, how you marvelous before the Most High. Read. In that thou hast humbled thyself. See, first and foremost, you got to be humble. They tell you knowledge puff us up. So we got to be humble. We got to find ways to be humble in all situations if we can. So remember the scripture said, if at all possible, be at peace with all men. If it's possible. Sometimes it ain't possible. But if you want to make it, you want to try to make it possible. Even Esau respect that. That's what he called you. Somebody, if you're trying to be humble, before them, you ain't trying to start nothing. They come at you, then you take care of business. You hurt them or kill them, whatever you have to do to them. It's in self-defense. He didn't respect that. You know what I mean? That's why you come humble. They want to they mess with you. you take